Hey, what's going on? Welcome to this episode of the Whole Health Rob Carney Podcast. This episode today is actually going to be a solo cast, so a little bit different than my typical format where I'm interviewing or connecting with another like-minded individual in the world of wellness, personal development, or entrepreneurship. Today, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about what I've been really working on the past four to six months or so, and that's really structuring and organizing my day. You know, in the entrepreneurial space, it's easy when we have our own schedule to get lost in uh, lost in the day to day things and kind of get focused on the the little things that may not give us the best return on our investment. You know, whether that's engaging on social media, um, you know, posting all these things that are great and are helpful for our business, but may not be you know driving our our life, driving sales, allowing us to be the most happy, healthy, and best version of ourselves. So today I want to talk a little bit about structuring and organizing our day. Before I get into that, if you are watching this on YouTube, thank you. I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have a lot of exclusive content coming out on YouTube every single Thursday. And the podcast will actually be live first on YouTube. That'll be the closest or the fastest way to see that at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Monday for the podcast and 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday for the new videos. And I do have my plants, house plants course, which was once a paid course now for free exclusively on YouTube. So if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple, or wherever else you're listening to this, I would love for you to check out the YouTube page, hit the subscribe button, check out some of the videos on there because there is content on YouTube that you will not find anywhere else. So with that being said, let's dive right in. What are we talking about today? Organizing the day. So I want to outline a few things for you and what's been really working for me, as I said, over the past, I mean, this has barely been many years in the making, but really adding a lot of intention to that over the past four to six months as I felt I hit a little bit of a plateau with my own personal growth and business growth. So I decided to make some calculated changes these past few months. So the, the philosophy I want to start with is we want to fill our own cup up first. And you may have heard me talk about this on multiple occasions where I talk about the I, we, and the all. So, you know, yourself, starting with you, the I, starting with the people closest to you, the we, and then focusing on everything else, it being the all. So how do we do that within our day? Well, we want to give ourselves time in the morning to fill our own cup first. So for me, what that's been looking like is starting off with hydration is number one, you know, brush my teeth, scrape my tongue, refuel my body because we've been sleeping for hopefully eight to 10 hours. Oh, not everybody needs that. We'll call it six to 10 hours, depending on what you're doing. Um, So that being said, you know, we've been really dehydrated. So adding some high quality salt, adding some minerals. If you're watching this, you can see I got my little mineral droppers right there. Um, Ionic Elements by Purium is a great one. Um, If you want to check that out, uh, you can use my discount code Whole Health for that. And that will save you 50 bucks off your first order. Those are great mineral drops. Um, You can just add real salt, high quality salt, um, sea salt, pink Himalayan salt, um, Celtic salt, those are all great options as well for rehydrating our cells with those minerals that we may have lost over the course of our resting hours. So filling our cup up first, another activity, and I always have a walk in there or some sort of movement, um, whether that's going to the gym, whether that's walking, um, but getting my body moving is a big piece. And in the winter here, it gets a lot more difficult to do the other big piece in my morning, which is getting sunlight. And we want to expose ourselves to light as soon as we can in the morning. And again, you've probably heard me talk about this if you're in my Purium team or you're in the whole health community, uh, because this has been a big focus of what we've been talking about as of late. So ancestrally, think of before we had these giant square homes that we live in, we were often outside, you know, maybe in a teepee, in a tent, and something that was allowing some sort of light to come in. We didn't have blackout curtains is my, my point I'm driving at here. So we were getting exposed to light. And when we get exposed to light, that's a signal to our body that it's time to wake up. So we have light even touching our skin, doesn't even be going into our eyes. So face masks are great, you know, if you're using that to sleep, but if light is touching your skin, that is stimulating that wake up response. So we can use that to our advantage. So if we get outside, preferably within the first 20 minutes of waking up, I'd say, uh, you know, definitely before 10 a.m. is, you know, obviously time zone, depending, you want to get out there between 10 a.m. your time. Um, that's going to be a great deterrent to get our circadian rhythm into the right spot. So we want to get into there. I think I said deterrent. I meant a uh, determining factor in getting our um, circadian rhythm up to speed there. So sunlight, movement, hydration, those are great pieces. If you do not have access to sunlight, like right now, I'm recording this looking outside. It's a completely gray day outside here in Boston, Massachusetts. 
So that's where red light therapy is a great option. And I will link my favorite red light therapy device um, down there with a discount code for you. But that's been a great piece that I don't really use that much in the summer, honestly, unless I have some sort of injury or soreness and I find it's great for that. But in the winter, I really enjoy that in the morning to get myself primed for the day, getting some sort of light sensation on my body. So on the similar note, you know, I mentioned doing things in the morning, taking care of ourselves first, filling our cup up so that when we go out into the world, you know, we are filled up, we're charged up already. So kind of priming ourselves for the day essentially is the theme. Prime yourself for the day in the morning. What does that look like for you? Maybe a little bit different. Maybe some reading some days for me. Maybe it is some journaling, um, you know, whatever it may be. And I'm going to take, uh, as Mr. Tim Ferriss would say, a dramatic sip of coffee. Mm. Best ever. Got some uh, pure MVP sport chocolate protein in there. Got some creatine in there. Um, some nice grass fed butter, MCT oil, and light coffee. I like the taste of coffee. I'm a big fan. Um, and I think it does give me a little bit of a mental stimulus, um, which is nice as well. But again, it's very light. I make my own. I think there's something else in there. Oh, layered superfood creamer, of course. But, you know, it's, it's mostly just fats and proteins, what is a little smidge of coffee. So anyway, that's a great tool as well. Enjoy a nice warm cup of coffee or your favorite warm beverage, whatever that is. And I always say, don't overdo the coffee. You know, we don't want to be you know taxing on those adrenal glands and drawing energy we don't actually have. Um, so I just use it, again, very lightly for the enjoyment factor. And sometimes, hey, it does help with concentration. So it can be used just like anything, use in moderation. So filling a cup up first. I like to say, let's start with something difficult to start off the day. That gives us a win to, to start. So exercise could be a thing. Meditation could be a difficult thing. So that could be your piece. A cold shower is one of my favorites. For me, it's the cold shower, the exercise, going out the walks. Because in the summer, going out for a walk is the easiest thing ever. I just you know throw on a pair of shoes or preferably barefoot, and I'm out the door. You know, I got my tank top on, I got my shorts on, and I'm going. But here in the winter... It's a little bit colder. So sometimes going out in a 20 degree morning at 7 a.m. Is, is a win for the day. And that can be enough to get that positive momentum going. So again, priming for the day, getting that positive momentum going early on in the day. Now, a concept that, again, I've been really honing in on is leaving myself space at some point during the day. So I'm going to get into stacking activities together. And leaving space, think about how connected we are to our digital devices, whether we're on our phone, on our computer, whatever we're working on, we're so plugged in that a lot of times we don't have space. You know, we go from work to our break where we're then catching up on our phone or we're reading the news, hopefully not watching the news, mainstream news, hopefully not. But, you know, we're going from stimulus to stimulus to stimulus. And then all of a sudden it's nighttime and we're just wired in bed because we've just been go, go, going all day. We actually haven't given ourselves the space to slow down. So if you're working a nine to five, you know, and you, let's just say you have an hour break, give yourself an hour break to disconnect, you know, focus on just eating, try to avoid the temptation of, you know, checking into your phone. Cause I remember when I was working, you know, a nine to five job and it's like, I have my lunch break and I'm like checking up on my phone and doing all this stuff. And all of a sudden my hour break or 30, 45, whatever the length of the break was, is gone. It's like, oh man, I don't even feel recharged. So I didn't give myself the time to disconnect. I just added more stimulus and stress into that <laughs> stress soup, we'll call it. So maybe it's filling your cup up early in the day. Get, maybe you wake up a little bit early. You have that time to disconnect. Maybe it's being intentional with your lunch break. Maybe it's that time after work. Let's just say, again, for the nine to five scenario, let's say you get home at 530 because you have a 30 minute commute, which I think is pretty average for people nowadays. So you get home at 530 and maybe take an hour you know, you get the, the foods ready, it's cooking, you take an hour while it's cooking just to slow down, breathe, don't go to the TV, don't go to the phone, just disconnect, slow it down. Because it's often in those periods of disconnecting and stillness that creativity is allowed to flow and we can actually metabolize this whole life experience that we are enjoying when we have more time to disconnect. So what does that look like? 
that may be as simple as just not being on your phone, which again, in this day and age is, is not common to spend any more than a few minutes not checking our phone. So maybe it's sitting without the phone, without the TV, whatever the technology piece that you um, may have a slight addiction to, because I definitely find myself checking my phone instinctually um, or habitually, I should say, um, without any real intention at times. So something I'm working on there as well. So the more time we can have for disconnection, the more time we can have for stillness, allows more creativity to flow. And especially if you're in the entrepreneurial space, you know, creativity is kind of a big piece of running a business, being able to have the bandwidth and the um, free time to be creative. Because if we're just constantly stressing and not giving ourselves that space, it's tough to be creative. All right. So we're talking about space, talking about creating the stillness. Another piece to allow us to create that space. And this is more for people that are in the entrepreneurial space. Um, if you have your own business, maybe a personal trainer, um, some sort of contract or whatever it is, you have a little bit more flexibility around schedule. Stacking activities has been so incredibly helpful for me. So let's just say, for instance, creating Instagram content. Maybe I spend one day a week for three hours straight, just creating a ton of content. Then now I have content for the entire week. Rather than every time I want to go to post, it's like, oh, let me make a new post. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me post it up. It's like, no, let me stack this together so I can get into that flow. Think of how many times that we start to get into a flow, then the distraction of the phone buzzes up, oh, you know, notification up, oh, you know, whatever. So phones on do not disturb or airplane mode. When I go into that space and dive into that, that activity fully and completely immerse myself. So I batch create content has been a big thing for me. Same thing with like making YouTube videos. As I mentioned, that's a big focus of mine, especially going into 2022. It's going to be a huge platform for me moving forward. I know if you're watching this, you probably found um, me through Instagram as that's by far my um, biggest following and biggest, you know, time. Uh, my biggest platform I spend the most time on, which is going to be a little bit more balanced with YouTube coming forward. So batching things together, and that could be phone calls. That's been really helpful for me instead of having a phone call at 9 a.m., a phone call at 12 p.m., a phone call at 2 p.m., a phone call at 4 p.m., 5, 30, 7, 9. It's like, how can I batch these all together so that I go in creative mode and then go into social mode instead of creative social, just kind of this back and forth where you can never really get into either. How can you stack these like activities together? Another thing for me is, like I was mentioning before, the self-care in the morning has been so helpful to have that. So let's just say I get up at seven. From seven to 10 is typically my self-care window where I go to the gym, you know, I do my stretch and go for a walk, get some good breakfast, take a cold shower. And now my self-care is essentially complete for the day. Of course, there's going to be other things, you know, if I'm not working out today, that may be replaced with reading or some sort of other, you know, maybe I will start working earlier. But generally speaking, I'm batching my self-care into the morning. Then I'm always taking breaks, going for mini walks, mini stretches throughout the day. But the bulk of it is done in the beginning. Because I found before, there's a guy, I go for a walk in the morning. Then around, you know, after lunch, I go for a workout. And then, you know, later in the evening, I go for another walk, a long walk. And then, you know, it was just too spread out. And again, it was just the same da -da 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 -da, up and down and up and down, shifting gears, shifting gears as opposed to getting into the one zone and really going full force, and full force into it. So for me, what I've been really working on lately is self-care in the morning and then kind of, you know, mid to late morning to early afternoon is kind of that creative zone. And then late afternoon into evening is social time. Cause that, you know, for me, phone calls require a lot less brain power than getting into that creative mode. Um, so I like to kind of sandwich that creative in, in, in the, between the boost of my self-care, my priming, and then the phone calls, which to me kind of give me more energy at the end of the day when I may be a little bit more tired. So that's what I've been doing for stacking. Um, I got a couple more things I had and wanted to talk about. And the other one is leaving time to wind down at night. And that's a big piece that I was saying earlier. You know, we're so overly, overly stimulated that how can we give ourselves that time to prime ourselves in the evening you know we talk about prime ourselves in the morning for the day now it's prime ourselves for sleep because arguably sleep is the most free abundant medicine out there in the planet 
because you don't need it really any resources to sleep. So how can we optimize that sleep? How can we prime ourselves for sleep? How can we leave time to wind down? Because most of us are so busy, we got a million things going on, but oftentimes we found, if you go into your phone statistics and see how many hours a day you spend on your phone, you may shock yourself to say, hey, well, if I didn't spend that time on my phone, I would have three and a half more hours or six and a half more hours or nine and a half more hours, whatever your uh, commitment to your phone level is. So doing things like, you know, avoiding screens before bed, avoiding EMS, which I just had a podcast out last week. i um, talking about EMS with uh, Chris Mahala from Aries Tech. Does a phenomenal job. Um, you know, EMFs, basically electromagnetic fields, if you're not familiar, which are being blasted from, you know, this computer I'm recording on, the phones we have, Wi-Fi, you know, 4G, 5G, LTE, all these, you know, radio waves, microwaves, all these different radio, or not radio, all these different frequencies that are coming at us from the devices that we've created, which are incredibly helpful, um, but do come with some stress in the body and they do stimulate brain function in terms of there's a lot, you know, kind of going on in the brain that's activating the brain. And we don't want to be activating our brain when we're going to bed. So avoiding screens, avoiding EMFs, um, avoiding blue light, blue light blockers are really good. I don't have a pair of mine sitting around here because it's uh, in the morning as I'm recording this late morning. Um, so you know, avoiding screens, avoiding eating before bed is a big one too. I find if I eat before bed, you know, my body's spending all this time and energy on digestion as opposed to restorative sleep. Um, so that can be helpful. And anything stressful at the end of the day, you know, if you're doing something stressful right at the time before you go to bed, you've primed your body to go into that stress response, to get that energy, to go into fight or flight mode. And that's not that rest and digest parasympathetic state. So the main piece of the wind down, the prime for bed is getting into a parasympathetic state. Rest and digest. Stretching is a great piece. You know, reading, just chilling out, doing some yoga, meditating, journaling, things that are going to wind down, reflect on the day, slow it down, get yourself ready for the best sleep ever so you can have the best day ever all over again. So that's it. That's what I want to talk about, organizing our day. Some things have been working for me. Just want to spit it here with you. Hope that you enjoyed this episode. And like I said, you know, if you're not already subscribed on YouTube, I would love for you to do that so you can see all the latest and greatest content that's coming out in the longer form. Um, as opposed to Instagram, which will be more, you know, posts and, you know, the, the fun little things. But uh, more in-depth concepts will be on YouTube. So once again, thank you for being here. I appreciate your support. If there's anything I can do to support you, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram is the best way to reach out to me at Whole Health Connections. Check it out. Um, if you're looking to upgrade your nutrition into the new year, you're upgrading, looking to upgrade your lifestyle in general, uh, the Whole Health community is probably a great option for you. We talk about all sorts of things, holistic health and healing, um, and you can get two free weeks by messaging me on Instagram saying you want to join the Whole Health community. And if you're looking to upgrade your nutrition, obviously, I've got my favorite superfoods uh, where I've got some great discount codes available for you. And these have been so great for improving my health overall, you know, not even to mention the convenience factor of them, but improving my energy, my sleep, mental clarity, you know, so many things. Recovery, actually, that's a big one. I've been really exercising a lot more. So, you know, if you're looking to upgrade your lifestyle in general, shoot me a message. Let me know what your goals are on Instagram. I'll be more than happy to kind of play matchmaker and make some suggestions that could uh, work for you, whether it's community, whether it's some products, whether it's coaching, whatever the case may be. So thank you again. Have the best day ever. See you on the flip side.